Greetings traders and welcome back. Today we're going to be diving into an in-depth with Chris episode where we cover the top 10 most traded commodities of 2021. Commodity trading is something that has been around for a very long time, arguably longer than pretty much any other style of trading. The concept of trading goods or buying and selling agricultural goods has existed since humans have been bartering or trading for items. It's only a more recent event where we began trying to monopolize on the price changes or discrepancies that exist of those goods. So we're going to dive into exactly what commodities are as well as cover the list of the most traded products and give you a little bit of inside info into each one of those. So let's get going. The top 10 most traded commodities of 2021, a list that all of us desire to be on. Just kidding. But the first thing we should cover is what a commodity is to make sure we're all on the same page. A commodity is defined as a physical asset that can be used in the production of other goods. The asset must be fungible in nature to be classified as a commodity. This means that it should be interchangeable. For example, iron is considered a commodity because it does not matter where it's been mined. The grade plays a part, sure, but in broader terms, iron in China is not unique and can be replaced with iron mined pretty much anywhere else. The metal is a basis for the production of other products products making it a commodity. So that's what a commodity is, but why would we be interested in trading commodities? Commodity trading has a number of benefits depending on the market participant. It provides a marketplace to sellers and ensures an efficient way for price discovery. It also enables producers and buyers to hedge the price of a commodity by locking in a price at a future date. This protects these players from market volatility and helps them focus on their core businesses. Commodity trading also offers a host of unique propositions to traders that other financial products may not exhibit. Traders can use commodity trading to enhance their returns when the capital markets are underperforming. In many cases, the price of commodities is negatively correlated to traditional markets. Trading also enables one to take a leveraged position. This means the commodities market offers derivatives that can amplify the returns by deploying a fraction of the capital required. This is not the case when someone physically buys and sells the commodity in the cash market. Moreover, buying the physical commodity would lead to complications like finding a place to store the asset. Instead, gaining exposure through trading accounts is a much more efficient way to be involved. Commodity prices also tend to be very volatile, which makes them an appropriate asset to trade when done correctly. Now we get to find out who made the list. Which are the top 10 most traded commodities of 2021? This is the cool club, if you will. At the top, we have Brent crude oil traded on the ICE exchange. That's the Intercontinental Exchange. Then we have steel, which is traded both on the SFE and the LME. That's the London Metal Exchange, as well as the Shanghai Futures Exchange. Then we have the WTI crude oil, which is traded on NYMEX, my personal favorite. Then we have soybeans traded on the Chicago Board of trade. Then we have iron. Iron is traded on the Singapore exchange. Then we have corn, CBOT, Chicago Board of Trade again. Then finally comes gold, copper, aluminum, and silver, all traded on the London Metal Exchange. So this is your list of your top 10 most traded. Doesn't mean that if you're not on the list that you're just not a valuable commodity, but these are undeniably the most traded commodities of 2021. To break some of the most traded agricultural commodities down a little bit further, it's important to understand that these commodities generally serve as a food source, or in some instances, they can serve as fuel. We have soybeans, and soybeans is a very versatile crop. Soybean has so many applications, which is why the crop is just so darn popular in so many countries. It acts as a rich source of protein, and it's consumed as tofu, soy milk, soybean oil. It's also popular in animal feed. The list goes on and on. The demand and price for soybeans depend on the price of meat since the crop acts as an alternative to it. Like corn, soybeans are also used as biofuel. Major countries producing the crop in the world today are going to be the United States, Brazil, Argentina, and China. 
Corn is another extremely popular agricultural crop. It can be used, once again, in many forms. It can even be used as biofuel, just like the soybeans. And similar to coffee, weather patterns have a major impact on the yield of the commodity, as we'll discuss here momentarily. But the U.S. tops the list of corn-producing countries in the entire world, followed by China and then Brazil. And then finally, we have a worthy mention of coffee. Coffee is one of the most traded agricultural commodities, and it happens to be one of the oldest as well. The demand is driven by the fact that coffee is a popular beverage across the globe. Brazil is the leading supplier of the product and accounts for almost a third of the global production. The price tends to be affected by the harvest, which in turn is dependent on the climatic conditions. Other major countries involved in the production of coffee are Vietnam and Colombia. Now on the precious and industrial metals side, see what I did there? The industrialization of the economy brought about the rise of precious and industrial metals in the commodities markets. As the mining process became a bit more technologically advanced, the output of important metals also increased. The commodity exchange also played a vital role in shaping the demand by giving access to a wide range of various metals. We'll first talk about steel. Steel is something that comes from iron and carbon. Those are the primary constituents, but other elements in the alloy include chromium, nickel, tungsten, and manganese. The composition of the constituents depends on the application. Steel is commonly used because it is such a strong and relatively low-cost metal. The price of steel is highly correlated with economic activity because it's used with things like infrastructure and manufacturing processes. The prices can drop sharply when the economic forecasts aren't so favorable. The pandemic had a tremendous impact on steel prices as lockdown measures led to negative GDP growth in most economies. China is the leading producer of steel and the production output of the country determines the global supply of steel. Then we have iron. Iron is abundantly available and is used in a number of industries. Iron is also used in the production of steel. The price of iron has been relatively stable and industrial activity is the primary determinant of price in the commodities market. The introduction of tariffs can also play a crucial role in shaping the future price of this commodity with the world's top iron producing countries being Australia, Brazil, China, and India. Then we have gold. Gold is one of the most popular metals traded in the exchange today. Initially, gold was kept by households as precious metals or as jewelry. It is the go-to asset when the financial markets are in turmoil, owing its safe haven status due to how many people desire it. This was also seen at the onset of the pandemic when gold prices remained resilient as capital markets across the globe faced immense pressure. Of late, gold has multiple industrial applications due to its inert property and the ability to conduct electricity. China is the leading producer of gold, with the other major economies mining this precious metal being Russia, Australia, and the U.S. While assessing the demand for gold, we can consider it a financial asset because the price is mainly determined by the willingness of market participants to invest in the commodity itself. And finally, we have silver. Silver is the second most traded precious metal. As a metal, it has several properties similar to gold that make it an appropriate metal for industrial use. Industrial activity has more influence on the price of silver since it's more widely used in this manner than gold. This makes the price volatile when the economy isn't doing well. Investors therefore prefer gold as an alternative to other financial assets. Mexico, Peru, and China are the top three silver producing countries in the world today. On the energy side of things, the demand for energy products itself is the reason why many commodities like crude oil have such an immensely high trading volume. These commodities literally fuel the economy and the price can be so volatile, making it a great product for trading, but also a very dangerous one if you don't know what you're doing. At the top, we have crude oil. Crude oil is the commodity that has the highest trading volume. Crude oil is used for the extraction of petrol, diesel, and petrochemicals. Brent oil and West Texas Intermediate Oil, which is WTI, are the two most traded types of crude oil. 
The price of crude can fluctuate according to the level of industrial activity that is currently going on. This was apparent when WTI traded below zero dollars due to low demand for the product, and this was relatively recent. The supply side also has a major impact on the price of crude as nations producing this commodity can affect the supply and alter the price of the commodity. Conflicts in the Middle East and production cuts by OPEC countries have significantly impacted the price of crude oil in the past. Next comes natural gas. This commodity is considered a replacement to crude oil and it's considered a clean energy source due to the low carbon emissions. The popularity of natural gas rose once the storage and transportation of the commodity became possible. Industrial usage of natural gas is also common these days and it's also used in households for heating and operating various appliances. The US is the largest producer of natural gas followed by Russia. The weather patterns drives the price of natural gas as colder spells increase the demand for heating power. Lower crude prices tend to also drive the demand away from natural gas as there's a cheaper alternative at times. And finally, we have Brent oil. Brent oil is one of the versions of crude oil. The oil is drilled from the North Sea and has low sulfur content and low density, making it easy to refine. The price of Brent oil, like any other type of crude oil, is highly dependent on economic activity. The price of Brent also depends on the price of natural gas. If the price of natural gas increases, the demand for Brent will then rise as well, which can drive the price of Brent up with it. So in summary, the commodities markets offer a very high range of volatility, which in turn provides ample opportunities for us as traders to pick from. The reason that that matters is because we can avoid less than favorable trades that we might be taking while trading less volatile items because we are just simply bored. None of us are immune to the psychological pressures. I know I sure am not. So that's why having more choices to choose from can generally be a good thing. On top of that, the fact that the economics of the world can so heavily and quickly influence the prices of the commodities that can provide us another angle to exploit. Good luck out there. Happy trading. I'll see you all very soon. Bzz.